بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Praise be to Allah, the Lord, Cherisher and Sustainer of the world, the most gracious, the most merciful, the Master of the Day of Judgment. All praise is due to Allah and Allah's peace and blessings be upon His last messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, His pure family, His loyal companions and all those who follow them with righteousness and good deeds until the Day of Judgment. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. The Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that when it is the first night of Ramadan, the evil is enchained, the gates of hell are shut, the gates of paradise are open wide. And someone calls, anyone who wants righteousness and good deeds, come forward. And anyone who wants bad deeds and evil, stay far away. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pardons many people from hellfire. And this is in every night of Ramadan. Now here, the Messenger Muhammad is speaking about the first night of Ramadan. We have to remember that night comes before the day. So in Islam, except for some exceptions, the night is considered first. So with the last sunset of, from this month of Sha'ban, Ramadan has already started. These benefits that the Messenger Muhammad mentioned already started. And this is one of the nights that many people waste, God forbid. Think still, Ramadan hasn't started yet. Ramadan has already officially started. And the benefits of Ramadan, the Messenger Muhammad mentioned, already started. So you have to pay attention to it. Now the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned many benefits, many things. But we will concentrate on just few points regarding the uh, preparation for the coming month, inshallah. The first one the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that evil is enchained. All the satans and the bad jinns, all of them are enchained. Alhamdulillah. So Allah Almighty is giving you uh, a start ahead. He's trying to prevent you from the major distractions and difficulties. Your main enemy. This is great. However, in Ramadan, do all people stop sins and bad doings? No, some of them continue to do that, right? And in fact, some of them might even increase it in Ramadan, God forbid. I say, yes, some media channels in Ramadan, they have special flavors of programs, bad programs, only in Ramadan, for this season. So, so some of the satans are not doing their work. There are some satans among people who are doing their work, God forbid, making up for the missed one. This is the first part. First part is that there are satans among people. You have to be careful about them as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this in the Holy Quran. Satans from the people and from the jinn. Satan means someone who is far away from the right path. Someone who is trying to distract others from that. That's it. So it's considered a satan, get from it. And the second part regarding this is, the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned the major jinns and the bad jinns, not all of them. So probably some of the weaker ones still continue to try to seduce people or misguide people. But those are much easier. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is already taking care of the big one, the most difficult one. So you have to deal yourself with those, the remaining. So you have to do your part as well. But the third and most dangerous one is actually yourself, your own. Your own whims and desires. Those are the biggest distraction for a human being. It's not the satans, the satans of people, although both of them are dangerous, but mostly you yourself. Do you try to protect yourself and do what is good and beneficial, or do you just follow your whims and desires? So that is the three uh, distractions. Now, as we are approaching the month, these are just some highlights of what we should do to try to benefit from this month. The first thing is try to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from sins and wrongdoings. Everybody has sins and wrongdoings. We are human beings. However, the best are those who quickly repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and correct their mistakes. So that is why we have to renew our repentance, our tawbah, our asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness before the beginning of Ramadan. So that when we start Ramadan, we are ready to receive the benefits of Ramadan and the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the second part is to purify your heart. Clean your heart. Now when you, when you have an important meeting or an important visitor, you clean up your house. Even if it was clean, you still have to check, double check, make sure that everything is in order, right? Now, your heart is about to receive one of the most important visitor, yearly visitor. So how are you going to prepare? Just normal or you have to 
recheck and clean. Now the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned this danger thing. The Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Temptation is presented to the heart like a mat, stick by stick, side by side, all of them, like a mat. You know mat, how mats are crossed together, so each one of them is linked with the other and pulling with the other and they continue. So those temptations are presented to the heart like this. So anyone who accepted, he is impregnated with it. A small black dot or mark is put in his heart. And anyone who rejects it, a white mark is put in his heart. This continues for both of them, till you have two hearts. One of them white, as a smooth, solid white stone. No temptation or desire can harm it, as long as the heavens and earth still exist, forever. That's it, he is clear. He see with the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has insight and wisdom. He knows what is good and bad. So he continues on the right path as much as he could. That is the first heart because he didn't follow those temptations from the beginning. And the second heart, God forbid, till it turns black and dust colored like. It's like a cup that is upside down. God forbid. A cup that is upside down. It does not accept any good deeds, no matter how many comes to it. And it does not reject any bad deeds, no matter how many comes to it. God forbid, see? Except what it, it's like. Whatever it likes, it will follow it. But it does not, it's will not stop. So this is how dangerous it is because of these black dots and when they overcome or overtake the human being. There are different kinds of hearts, but those are the most important uh, point that we would like to remind ourselves. Good deeds wipe away and cleanse the bad deeds. So you have to continue with that. Very important. It doesn't mean that you will never make any mistake or any sin. No, we are human beings, but you have to clean it as soon as possible. If there is some uh, impurity or some dirt is in your house or fell from your hand or somebody throw it, do you leave it there or do you clean it as soon as possible? It's the same with your heart. If something comes, you have to clean it as soon as possible so the heart will remain white and pure for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the second part is try to clear your record from any rights of other people or the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any outstanding due paid off before the coming Ramadan. There are many different types. Very quickly, if you have any outstanding fasting not made up for yet from the previous Ramadan, make up for it as soon as possible before the next Ramadan comes. Because it's not permissible to delay it till the next Ramadan, except if you have a valid excuse. If you had no excuse, but you were lazy and you delayed it, then you have to make up for it after this Ramadan, but you also have to give kafara for each day, feeding one poor person for each day that you uh, delayed. The second also, any rights of people. If there are any rights of people, unpaid, settle it now. Before there will be no money anymore. It will be just good deeds and bad deeds. It will be taken from you. If not in this world, in the hereafter, rights of people. So ask them for forgiveness, for pardon, or pay them back. Chiver, but don't leave it like this. The rights of people are very important uh, in Islam. The second part is to pay attention to the obligation in Islam, the obligatory parts in Islam. Some people fast in Ramadan, but they don't pray. Which one is more important in Islam, prayer or fasting? So prayer has a precedence. It's much more important. It is the most important pillar in Islam. So he's doing something else. Although it is very important as well and a pillar, but he has missed the most important pillar. This is required once in a year, this is required daily five times. Imagine. And he thinks that it doesn't mean that he should stop fasting because he's not praying. No, but he should start praying as soon as possible. Pay attention to the obligation. Obligation before the secondary. Imagine if you are going to university and there are obligatory so topics to take or subjects and there are supplementary subjects. Someone is doing all the supplementary subjects, but he's not doing any of the obligatory one. Will he pass? Will he succeed? What is it? You have to do the obligation. The first thing, pay special attention to the obligation. All of them. Second, increase the good deed, the supplementary. Do it. Because they will complement and they will perfect the obligatory one. So when you do that, it will protect for you the obligation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then increase any good deed that you can. Anyone. To any creature. All of that is helpful uh, to you. The next point is to pay attention to having good morals and ethics. 
This is very critical in Islam. And there is no way to re-emphasize this more than what the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu said. He said, I was sent by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala merely to complete or perfect the moral code. Just to make it perfect. The moral code in Islam is linked with each and every worship. Every one of them. From Salah to Zakah to Psalm to uh, Hajj to all the rest. And this is required in beliefs, in worship, and in dealing with people. Now, uh, when we are coming to Ramadan, just some glimpses. The Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu said, If it is the fasting day of one of you, then let him not be vulgar, nor obscene, nor loud. Shouting. Losing control, even by just the tongue or loud. And the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu said, Some people will fast and they will get nothing from their fasting except hunger and thirst. And some people will fast and they nothing uh, some people will pray at night and they will get nothing from their prayer except tiredness and lack of sleep they're not getting the benefit uh, of Ramadan so you have to be attention to this dealing with other people and the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said anyone who is not readily giving up false speech and false testimony telling lies or giving a false uh, testimony Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is in no need of him to give up his food and drink so you have to pay very special attention. We'll elaborate on this, inshallah, later on as we go through the month. But those are the highlights. Now the final and most important one is to protect your gains in Ramadan. What does that mean? You know, there are some people who fast, who pray at night, who give charity, who are very good in morals, etc. And then when they are breaking the fast or at night or at any given time, they waste this. Either they are not doing it sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so it's void. Or they are doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they are wasting it away, doing sins and wrongdoings as well, so they will equal it or be more. Or, God forbid, they are abstaining from all of that, but they are speaking bad about other people, or they are speaking ill about them, or thinking ill about them, or they are involved in backbiting and slander, etc. So they are wasting or giving away for free all their hasanat, all their rewards in Ramadan. Nothing. By the end of the Ramadan, they get nothing. And this is very serious. How serious is it? The Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one day, we'll conclude with this inshallah. The Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one day, he stood in the member, in the pulpit. So as he ascended the first step, he said, Ameen, loudly. Then as he ascended the second one, he said, Ameen. And as he ascended the third one, he said, Ameen. People were wondering, so they asked the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you did something that you didn't used to do. Something. As you ascended, you said, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. Why is that? So the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that Jibreel, peace be upon him, came to me. He told him about three things. One of them is about the month of Ramadan, the point that we are mentioning. He said, anyone who reaches Ramadan, the month of Ramadan, because it's a great opportunity. Anyone who reaches Ramadan and he is not forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he may stay away from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Muhammad, say Ameen. So I said Ameen. Jibreel alayhi salam is making a dua against anyone who reached this opportunity and then waste it. He gets nothing from Ramadan. He does not give total, he does not get total forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month. Great opportunity wasted, get forbid. So he's not serious. He's not serious about being forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Jibreel alayhi salam said, he stay away from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has other things to do. He is busy with other things. So he is far away from that mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then uh, Jibreel alayhi salam say Ameen and ask the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam to say Ameen. And the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam say Ameen. Now the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is pointing this, pointing our attention because he cares about us. Because he is very merciful. He does not want you to waste this great opportunity. So he's saying this hadith to remind us. This is so serious, you have to pay special attention to it. So are we are approaching Ramadan. There are many other points, inshallah, we'll continue to discuss it through the month. But prepare yourself, be ready to receive the benefits of Ramadan. Clean your heart from all the sins and wrongdoings. Because if the heart is full with sins and wrongdoings, no place to fill it up with anything else. If somebody is having a uh, a cup that has dirty water in it or spoiled juice or whatever anything that is bad smells bad tastes bad cannot drink it not good for your health 
and it's filled with that. And you take a drop of honey and put it in it. Does it change the taste? Can you taste it? What about taking more and a second drop and a third drop and a fourth one and a tablespoon and a second tablespoon? No matter how much you put in it, still you cannot taste that honey and you cannot benefit from it and it will still remain probably harmful. So this is how dangerous it is. Unless you clean the heart first, prepare it for Ramadan and get much. That is why many of us now, you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you do tasbih, you do dhikr, you pray, you fast, and not much change. Yes, one of the reasons is because it's already filled with something else. So no matter how good you get, as long as you continue with the sins and wrongdoing and watching what is haram and listening to what is haram and speaking bad about other people and eating from haram, using riba, not wearing hijab, etc. All the bad things you are continuing. How are you expecting to feel the sweetness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Very difficult. And the second, the other part, people who are, no, they are alhamdulillah clean and everything, but it is full of holes, like a bucket that has uh, holes in the bottom. So you put it in it, but nothing remains. Most, most of us are like this. You waste it later on. So during the salah, you are pleased. You feel, you feel closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You feel the sweetness. After the salah, five minutes, ten minutes, you are fine. Later on, get back. Yes, because you, uh, there is something is wasting it. It's not filling up. Why? Because of all the holes. So you have to close all these holes. Pay special attention to all of that so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant us insha'Allah the blessings from him and the sweetness of his uh, faith and believe in him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us reach Ramadan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who are successful in Ramadan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who are pardoned from hellfire in Ramadan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who prosper and who are successful in this world and in the hereafter. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa taslima al